Hi, welcome to lesson five of Chef's Apprentice, learning to cook like a pro, one small plate at a time. This lesson is turkey saltimbocca. Saltimbocca is a classic Roman dish of veal, prosciutto, and sage. The Italian word saltimbocca literally means jump in the mouth. My version uses turkey, which many people prefer over veal, and adds asparagus and melted cheese. Although turkey can be dry and bland, the saltiness and fat of the prosciutto and cheese and the slight bitterness of the asparagus balance the turkey in this dish. If you would rather use veal, treat it just like turkey in this preparation. Another option would be to make the preparation with turkey and ask your guests to guess the main ingredient. They may guess that it's veal. Techniques we'll use today are chopping, blanching a vegetable, shocking it in an ice bath, pounding meat, seasoning, assembling a dish, searing and pan roasting, plating, and garnishing. One more thing, I recorded this introduction actually after I recorded the video of making the dish. And there's one thing you need to remember. During the preparation of the dish, we'll be, we will be wrapping the salt and boca roll in kitchen string. At the end of the preparation, when you slice the salt and boca and plate it, be sure to remove that kitchen string. We didn't do it on the video, and that's because we didn't add it to the prep list. So make sure that you put on your prep list, remove kitchen string after cooking. Okay, so now let's start cooking. So here, here we are at the board for lesson five, turkey saltimbocca. First we'll start with our mise, and the, the ingredients part of the mise first. We'll need turkey, obviously, and the turkey that I found today at uh, Whole Foods says that it's a uh, turkey tenderloin. Now I don't know whether they mean that this is the, in a prior lesson I showed you the, the chicken tenderloin, which is underneath the breast, it's a flap underneath the breast. I don't know if they're saying that this is the turkey tenderloin that's the flap under the breast, or whether this is just a marketing term that they're using to sell a piece of turkey breast. In either, in either case, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna use this uh, turkey and we're gonna portion it for this particular preparation. We'll also need some asparagus. Um, we'll need one per person if you're doing um, uh, if you're doing this full recipe, which is for uh, six people. Uh, we're only going to do one uh, in this particular um, uh, video. You'll need some prosciutto, and um, for this preparation, I like to use a prosciutto that's a little bit on the drier side rather than on the moister side. And this one, uh, which I got at Whole Foods, the uh, La Quercia Ridge Top Prosciutto. Uh, I already know that is a little bit on the dry side, so that's going to be good for this uh, particular um, preparation. In addition to that, we're going to need some sage leaves. I've already washed them and they're, they're stacked over here, uh, ready to um, be uh, rolled and then sliced. And we will also need uh, flour for dusting, uh, no, actually, for dredging uh, the saltimbocca rolls. And we don't need that much. We only need uh, probably about a, a cup or half a cup of it. We'll, I'll show you when we get there. Uh, we will also need arugula for plating the dish. And of course we will need our kosher salt as always and our pepper mill. And we will need some olive oil for cooking the um, salt and boca rolls when they're ready. So I am going to move the ingredients. I'm going to put the prosciutto back in the refrigerator now. Not because it needs to be refrigerated, but because if we leave it out, it's going to get softer and start to be more melty, and we don't want that. We want it to be firm. It's easier to handle that way. So I'm putting this back in the fridge. I'm going to go off camera and set up with our equipment. Okay, we are set with our equipment uh, for our uh, mise en place. We're going to need a slicing knife to slice the um, salt and boca rolls uh, uh, when they're ready to plate. We're going to need a uh, large pot for blanching the asparagus. We're going to fill this with water and put it on the stove, bring it to a boil, uncovered, uh, and we're going to put some kosher salt in there. How much kosher salt? Uh, well, we'll do that. When we get to that, we'll do that, that step. And uh, we're going to need a, uh, a grater for the, um, for the Gruyere cheese. We will need a couple of bowls. We'll need a bowl to, uh, for an ice bath. That's probably the uh, larger one. And we're gonna need a bowl for shredding the cheese. You could probably use the same bowl, but it would be easier to have two. We will, of course, need our chef's knife. 
we will need a, something to dredge the salt and boca rolls in. Uh, could be a plate, could be a baking pan. I'm going to use a sizzle plate. Uh, same sizzle plates I've been using all along uh, that are available from JB Prince. And uh, we're going to need a cast, I'm going to use a cast iron frying pan. You could use a regular frying pan if you like. We're also going to need some plastic wrap. Now, uh, I buy this plastic wrap uh, in the uh, 3,000 foot rolls from Costco. And uh, you don't need one this big, but they, they, I'll tell you, this is very economical and it's a lot easier to handle than the ones that come out of the uh, smaller boxes and it doesn't stick to itself as much. We also need a cutting board and we're going to need a colander to drain the, um, the asparagus. And we will need some uh, kitchen string, scissors to cut the kitchen string. And of course, we will need our prep list, which we've already prepared. So I'm going to go off camera and get set to start cooking. Okay, so I've pri prioritized the things on our prep list. The only one with asterisk is, is to heat some water that we can use to blanch the asparagus. Now I'm going to take this pot and we're going to put some salt in it. Now how much salt? Well, you want it to taste basically like seawater. So I'm going to put a healthy amount of salt into this pan, into this pot here. And uh, the reason that we do this is, be is for a couple of reasons. When you are blanching vegetables, the salt will, uh, one, raise the boiling point so the, the uh, water will um, be hotter when it boils. And uh, also, uh, it will, once you put the uh, green vegetable into the salted water and then you shock it in an ice bath at the end, you'll get a very green color, which we'll see after we blanch the asparagus. So I'm going to fill this pot up to the rivets, put it on the stove, bring it to a boil, uncovered. Okay, so the first thing on our, on our prep list was to heat the water. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to chop the sage. And uh, I'm going to put that into a little prep bowl after we chop it, just so that it doesn't get away from us here. So as I showed in a prior lesson, stack the uh, sage leaves. This is an easy way to do it. You don't have to do it this way. You can just chop them. But an easy way to do it is to stack the sage leaves, roll them up, and then cut them into very thin strips, and then just chop them and you'll have a nice coarse chop of the sage in uh, just, just a few seconds. Okay, so you need to put those into the prep bowl. Now we're gonna be pounding out this turkey on this board. So I have prioritized the uh, tasks on the prep list so that we get our chopping out of the way before we wrap this board to um, to pound to portion and pound the turkey. So we have uh, chopped the sage. We need to prep our arugula. Uh, now in this particular case I've already washed the arugula um, but we want to just pick out any leaves that are starting to turn a little yellow or any that look like they're a little past like this one here. And, uh, yep, yeah, okay. So then I think we can uh, either hold this aside, preferably covered, or put it in the refrigerator for the time being. So that's the uh, arugula is prepped. All right, now we need to shred the Gruyere. And I showed you that we have a, sh a uh, grater here. The best way to do this is to put this into a bowl preferably a bowl that is large enough to hold the grater comfortably. And then we want to cut off the rind on the side of the Gruyere. Gruyere, one of the world's great cheeses, comes from Gruyere, France. I, I was there once and I saw them making the Gruyere in these huge wheels, rooms full of these huge wheels. So we're going to take the cheese, cut off the rinds on either side. You can leave the rind on the, on the top end. And then we, we just want to run it along the grater in, on the side that has these holes that are about a quarter of an inch big. And grate some cheese into the bowl. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do most of this hunk of cheese because we're going to use some of it in this dish. And I will use some of it for uh, another preparation later today. It doesn't take long to grate this cheese. Okay, that should be enough. All right. 
And we're gonna put that aside for now. The cheese is grated. I should say shredded. Shredded is probably a better term for what we did to this particular piece of cheese. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to slice and portion the turkey. Now, this looks like a big honkin' hunk of turkey right here. So, we're going to pound this out, but before we pound it out, I want to slice it into smaller pieces. Now, we're doing small plates, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it this way, and then we're going to pound each one of those out. So, we're going to cut three out of each one of these. Got a total of six pieces. Okay. Good. All right, now we are going to put these aside. Uh, I think I'll just put them back into this pan for the moment because we need to wrap the board so we can pound them out. Okay, so um, our board actually had the turkey on it. Turkey uh, does not carry the same um, uh, uh, salmonella like uh, chicken does. But what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this board. I'm going to use this plastic wrap and I'm going to put down a layer of wrap on the bottom and wrap it around the edges here. Good. Now, we're going to put our turkey pieces down on top. And then we're going to put another piece of plastic over the top of them, like this. Now I usually use plastic wrap that is wider than this, about twice this wide. It covers the board on all four sides. But uh, this, uh, this size here, which is the 12 inch, is much more readily available. So I'm using, uh, this, uh, using this size for the, for the course. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pound these out. And um, we're going to use the pounder that I showed you earlier on the flat side, not on the um, bumpy side. And we're just going to pound these. We're going to spread out on the board. Until they're about, oh really only about an eighth of an inch thick, pretty thin. And as you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot of force them spread and get a lot thinner. Now you don't want to pound too hard. If you pound too hard, they will start to uh, fall apart. And you don't want to use the other side because you'll puncture your plastic and you'll also cause the, the uh, turkey to start to disintegrate. Okay, so we have them pounded out nice, nicely, and we will unwrap them, and I'll show you the thickness. You can just leave the bottom plastic where it is, and then just pull back, roll back your plastic. So here we have the uh, finished pound out piece. It's probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick. Yeah, it's a quarter of an inch in some places and eighth in, in the others. Okay, so we have sliced and we've portioned our turkey, we've covered the board, and we have pounded the turkey. All right, now we are going to go off camera while the um, water comes to a boil so that we can blanch the asparagus. Okay, our water in our pot is, has come to a boil, the salted water has come to a boil. Now we're going to prep the asparagus and then we're going to blanch it. Now to prep them, uh, so what some people do is they, everybody, you want to get rid of this white part at the end here, it's tough and it's fibrous. Uh, some people will take an asparagus and then they'll snap it, let it snap where it wants to snap. I think that wastes some of the good part of the asparagus, so what I do instead is I, if I have a piece that's like this, I usually go a little bit above, uh, you know, maybe a half an inch above the white. And so we'll cut that one off about there. And then for the other, and we want, to, we want to make the end neat on this one that we snapped off. 
And then on the others, um, usually I go about an inch to um, an inch and a quarter, depending on um, how white the bottoms look. So we're going to cut that off, and when we look at them, they, they should look pretty green. They all should look pretty green. Okay, so we we uh, cut them off in the right spot, and we also didn't waste any uh, asparagus. Okay, so what I'm going to do with these now is I'm going to take them over, and I'm going to drop them into the boiling water. All right, drop them into the boiling water, and now we set our timer, handy kitchen timer, for four minutes. Four minutes. Now, that's going to make them uh, firm, uh, kind of al dente, actually. Uh, they will still be bright green. They will not start to look uh, olive green. We've also prepared a bowl of ice water. We are going to drop the cooked asparagus into this ice water. That's called shocking in an ice bath. That will cause them to stop cooking immediately. It will also um, help to set their deep green color. So from our prep list, we prepped our ice bath. We are now blanching the asparagus. We're going to, uh, after they have, they have uh, been in the ice bath, we're gonna let them drain in that colander that I showed you earlier. So we are going to go off camera for a moment while the asparagus finishes blanching, probably about two more minutes. Okay, so our timer just went off and we are going to remove our asparagus from the blanching water, put them into our ice bath. Now, as you can see, they are a bright green, and this ice bath helps to set the green color, and the uh, blanching them in the salt water, that helps to uh, create the green color, or to bring, I should say, bring out the green color. So we're gonna let these sit in the ice for a few moments until I'm sure that they're finished cooking, and then we're going to, um, uh, we're gonna drain them in the colander. So we have blanched and we're going to drain the asparagus. So we're going to go off camera for a few minutes uh, while the asparagus finish cooling and draining. Okay, so we're back at the board and we are going to um, assemble the um, uh, salt and buckle roll. So uh, we're making a small plate, so I'm going to take one of these turkey breasts that I have pounded out, I'm going to cut it in half. Okay, and we're going to use, well they're both, both about the same, uh, so we'll just use this one here. Then we are going to cut our asparagus spear in half, and what you could do to make it a little bit more decorative is cut off uh, the bottom at, a, at an angle and then cut it in the middle at an angle. And then we want to have our uh, prosciutto handy. I've already taken it out of the fridge and I have not uh, opened it yet. So we're going to cut across the seal. Open up the prosciutto. Actually, it helps to uh, cut down the side as well. So, now the prosciutto is separated by layers of paper. So find the first layer of paper and carefully peel off the first layer of prosciutto. Okay. Now we are going to remove the paper and then carefully lay this sheet of prosciutto down on top of the turkey, just like that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is take our Gruyere cheese and we're going to put a nice healthy amount of it on top. Now this is not exactly your traditional um, salt and boca. This is my take on it. Salt and boca is usually just, it's actually usually veal uh, with uh, prosciutto that's been cooked. Sometimes it's braised, sometimes it's uh, sauteed, sometimes it's cooked in the oven. Um, but uh, today we are doing my version of prosciutto, uh, of, I'm sorry, of salt and boca. And we're not using veal, we're using turkey. and. Um, so we put a nice mound of this uh, shredded Gruyere cheese on top of the um, uh, prosciutto. Now we're going to put our asparagus on there and we're going to have the tip, beautiful tip sticking out one end and the, uh, uh, the other end sticking out the other end. And we're going to roll this up. OK. 
Okay, roll it up like that. All right. Now, we're going to take a piece of kitchen string, cut the string, and then we're going to put string underneath, and we're going to tie the roll snugly. There. Cut off the extra string. All right, so we have, uh, let's see, according to our prep list, we've prepped the prosciutto, we've assembled the roll, we have tied the roll, we created, we had it in, the, in uh, turkey, then prosciutto, then cheese, then asparagus. Now we're going to season the outside of the roll. Now, remember, prosciutto has salt, and the cheese also has salt. But we did not season the inside of the turkey, so I'm going to do kind of a medium level of seasoning on the outside. And we're also going to do grind of pepper all around, pat it on there so we don't, so it doesn't fall off. I like to use a coarse grind, as I've mentioned in prior lesson. The tighter the screw, on, uh, the nut on top of your grinder, the um, finer the grind, and the, coarse, the uh, looser the screw, the coarser the grind. Okay, now we've got it nice and seasoned with salt and pepper, and uh, now, next thing to do is to dredge in flour. Now we're going to take our uh, sizzle plate, and we're going to put some flour down onto the sizzle plate. Get nice and even on there. Now we're going to, this is called dredging, so we're going to take the, uh, the, the um, salt and boca roll and we're going to dredge it in the flour, basically rolling it in the flour. We want to get it well coated all the way around with the flour. Okay, now okay, according to our prep list, we've dredged it in flour. Now uh, it is ready to cook, so I'm going to break, I'm going to go off camera, I'll come back in a little bit at the stove and we will cook our salt and boca, turkey salt and boca roll. Okay, so here we are at the stove. We have our cast iron um, frying pan. We're going to put some uh, olive oil into the pan. And now we're gonna bring this to um, medium, somewhere between medium and high heat. And we're going to let this pan get hot, almost smoking hot. Now that's going to take a couple of minutes to do. Uh, so while we're waiting for the pan to heat, I will go off camera and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. So we're back. It's been about uh, two or three minutes. How long it takes for your um, oil to come to the almost smoking point will really depend upon your pan, how much oil you use, your stove, what heat you set it on. But we um, uh, can start to see whips of smoke coming off the top. I want to make sure the oil is covering the entire bottom of the, um, the pot. You might have no of uh, the uh, frying pan. You might have noticed I only used about a tablespoon of oil, roughly speaking. Uh, the oil is thicker when it's uh, cool, so as it heats up, it becomes thinner and spreads out. So you need less than you think you do. So then we're going to take our salt and boca roll and we're going to place it in the pan. And we're going to be browning it on all sides. Well, that's going to take a couple of minutes on each side. We're going to do, um, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. I think I'm going to have to turn the fan on too, unfortunately. Now when you put anything in a hot pan like this with oil, uh, the more oil you have, the less likely it is that it's going to stick. The hotter the oil is, the less likely it's going to stick. Uh, and also, give it time. Uh, if you um, mess with it too early, uh, you know, it, the, the, the nice browning that you might have on the side may 
stay in the pan and your, uh, uh, your protein, your meat may peel away from it. So you may, um, uh, may have had a really nice browning and then you might lose it because you, you mess with it too, too early. Um, you can sometimes tell if it's ready to be turned by shaking it. Yep, it's moving. See, it's, it's rolling on its own, so it's released from the pan. So now let's turn it over. Put a little oil on there. Do the other side. And you can see from the fact that this is a little bit blacker um, in certain spots that the um, uh, that it didn't contact oil in all of the places. Use a little bit more oil than that, then uh, you, you um, uh, won't have that happen. Also, if you swirl the meat around in the pan a little bit uh, before it sticks, you gotta do it immediately, and get some oil on it, uh, that can help to prevent that too. Also, you can oil it um, before you put it on. We didn't do that because we dredged it in flour first. pan's pretty hot, so it's going pretty fast. And we also want to do, we have, even though this is round, we want to do the other sides as well. We may have to just hold it in position for a bit if it doesn't sit on the side on its own. But we, want to, we want to brown it all the way around. Now the turkey was pounded pretty thinly, so what we're really going for here is to cook the turkey through. But remember the stuff that's inside is cheese, prosciutto, and asparagus. Now the asparagus was already blanched, so it's partially cooked. The prosciutto doesn't need to be cooked, and the cheese we only want to melt that. So what we want to do is we want to get the inside to be warm, but it doesn't have to be hot. But we do want to cook through, make sure the turkey is cooked through. That one, that side is sitting on its own. Turn it down a little bit. Now you don't have to use a cast iron pan to do this. You can use uh, any kind of frying pan. You can even use a non-stick frying pan if you like. Now once we get this, so it's browned on all four sides. Good, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water to the pan. Now this is actually called deglazing. I've got about two cups of water in this measuring cup here, but it's not crucial how much you have. And we're gonna let that boil like that, and what it's doing is it's creating steam, and it's helping to cook the salt and boca. Now you can also do this on a very low heat. Um, we can also use white wine instead of water. In fact, uh, cooking in wine is a, a one of the classic ways in which salt and boca is cooked. And later in the course, we will be deglazing with, um, with white wine. But for now, we're just going to use water. Also, if you're using cast iron, when you put that water in there, it's going to boil and evaporate a lot faster than if you use a different kind of frying pan because the uh, cast iron uh, gets uh, hot and it retains that heat. We're getting a nice, looking really nice color. And so we're gonna let that cook in there for a couple of minutes. Because it's, um, water, or if you had a different liquid like wine that's boiling and creating steam, there's actually um, a little bit less of a chance of overcooking uh, because uh, of the steam that's being created. Also the steam helps to surround the preparation with heat and uh, uh, helps to get the interior warm as well. I can see that the cheese is uh, melting on the side of the asparagus tip there. Turn it, let it cook on the side for a little bit. So 
So again, we're using our judgment. I think we had, uh, we browned it about maybe between one and two minutes on each side. Then we added the, the water to deglaze. And then we've been doing about a minute, one and a half, one and a, one, I'm sorry, one to two minutes on each side in the water. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise our heat again to um, up near high. Now our goal is going to be to start to reduce that liquid that's in the pan and we'll actually create a pan sauce because there's uh, oil in the pan, there's um, a, what's called a fond, that's the kind of the, um, the bits that kind of uh, stay in the pan from the cooking of any kind of a protein. And uh, mixing the the fond with the, the water for the deglazing or wine if you use wine, uh, you can make a pan sauce and that will reduce, the liquid will evaporate and eventually you'll have um, a sauce left in the pan. Now I'd say all together we're probably going to have this this roll in the um, pan between about oh seven and ten minutes but again it depends on uh, how long you sear it. it depends on your stove depends on how high you set the heat it depends on your pan it depends on how much oil you used it depends on how hot you got the oil before you started cooking and it depends also on how um, much steam you created when you uh, deglazed the pan there's a lot of factors but yet, what we're doing is not difficult. We're looking at it, and we're we're thinking, well, we have a piece of um, turkey that is about quarter inch thick. Uh, we can kind of see into it to some extent. Let's see. I think we are getting to the point where this is pretty much done. Now, we're going to rest it, as we always do. Grab a sizzle plate. I'm going to put it on the sizzle plate, rest it in a warm spot. Now, we're going to continue to reduce this water in the pan, creating a pan sauce. And you can see that we're, we're creating a sauce that has a nice color to it. This is also a great way to clean your pan. It, uh, if you're using one, of, I use a wooden spatula like this. You could use a metal spatula. Uh, and when you scrape the burned bits or the uh, somewhat, not burned, but the uh, cooked bits, I should say, off the bottom of the pan, you um, will be cleaning your pan at the same time that you're making a pan sauce. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're going to turn our heat off, and we are going to pour the pan sauce over pan sauce over the salt and boca. Good. Now we're going to let that rest for about five minutes and uh, then I'll meet you back at the board for plating. Well I thought I'd bring you back for just a moment to show you uh, how clean the pan is. Some people don't like the idea of putting water into a cast iron pan. If, you're, if your pan is well seasoned and if you used a decent amount of uh, fat, whatever that is, uh, butter or oil in your preparation, then um, if you use a liquid to deglaze the pan, uh, you're not going to be, um, you're not going to have to worry about ruining the, the seasoning of the pan. You can see in the pan here that um, the water that was used to clean it and to deglaze is basically just beating up. And I put it back down onto the warm, the, burner, the, the, the heat is turned off, but I put it back down to the warm burner and that will dry. If you want, you can accelerate the drying by uh, using a, uh, a towel or a paper towel. But this will just dry on its own because it already has a lot of heat retained in the uh, iron itself. And it's also sitting on a warm burner. So now we'll go back off camera, meet back up at the board in a couple minutes after we're finished resting the salt and boca. All right, so here we are back at the board. It's time to plate up. Uh, first, we're going to uh, slice the um, salt and boca. 
Good, and we can see nice, perfectly cooked inside, and you get a nice view of the interior with the sliced asparagus. Now, to plate it, we're going to take a nice plate like this, and the arugula that we had yesterday, that we prepped yesterday, we're just going to put a nice little pile of the arugula down on the plate. We'll just use all of it, pick the, just about the right amount. And let's check our prep list. So we sauteed the rolls and we cooked them. We sliced them and we are now plating them. And we uh, deglazed the uh, pan with water earlier. Now we're going to take our salt and boca and we're going to try to arrange it in a, an artistic way. Let's say we're going to show this one here with the asparagus sticking up and then this one we're going to put along the side of it like that. Oh, actually, no, let's do it this way so we can see the asparagus tip. Okay, then uh, we want to pour or spoon the pan sauce over salt de boca. Now if we were making a lot of these, we would um, have to divide this, this sauce up among however many you're making. But since we're only making one, we're going to use it all. And uh, then we garnish it with sage. This is the, chop, the sage that we chopped yesterday. Sage is uh, one of the important or elements of the uh, classic Italian sal salt and boca. So, there we go. We have done everything on our prep list. We have plated our dish. It's ready to go and ready to eat. So let's recap the techniques that we used today. We did some chopping. We blanched the asparagus. We shocked the asparagus in, ice, in an ice bath to stop its cooking and to set the green color. We pounded out the turkey till it was about an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick between two layers of plastic. We seasoned the salt and boca, and we assembled the dish by rolling the ingredients together, which was the turkey and the prosciutto and the cheese and the asparagus. And then we seared the salt and, <coughs> excuse me, seared the salt and boca roll in the pan, and then we deglazed the pan with some water, uh, which helped to cook it. And then we sliced it, plated it, and garnished it. So that is Lesson 5, Turkey Salt and Boca. Hope you enjoy it.